Good morning, everyone. This is Premster, and if you're thinking I look a little worse for wear, I mm, there's a little bit less very good gin in the world this morning than there was last night because I drank it and I'm feeling the after effects. So I'm a little hungover, but um, I put this morning aside to uh, do some puzzle recording and I'm probably only going to get through one. But this is a puzzle by James Sinclair, a setter I really enjoy, recommended by Ambrose, another setter I really enjoy. So this was absolutely going to happen. Um... I don't know that there's much to go through. Um, I'm recording a fair bit in advance at the moment. Um, I think I'm up to like six days in advance. I know this is something I often try and do, um, but um, there's been a few people um, sending me stuff with um, some short notice, just like, can you try and do this event? And um, lately at the moment, the answer is often no, um, because I'm... Uh, I'm I'm just having to get stuff in the bank. Um, it's just the way I'm I'm having to do the channel at the moment. Um, I'm often having to record. It won't be today, but I'm often having to record four, five, six puzzles in a day, um, and then take a few days off um, and figure all that out. Um, I'm actually trying to get up to basically three weeks in ahead at some point, um, so that I can. Um, uh, take a, a longer break. I'm actually leaving the country for a while. So yeah, it um, which from Australia is a little bit tricky, uh, but I'm not going to New Zealand, so it doesn't really count. No, New Zealand's awesome. Um, so as I said, I'm a little hungover, so I will try and be my normal vibrant self, but we'll see how all that goes. Um, uh, I'm going to be uh, trying to get a setup um, so I can do some more stuff over on Bremster Games. Um, yeah, let's just look at the puzzle because maybe I should get this one over. So we've got Candy Bowl by James Sinclair. Now, as I said, this was recommended by Ambrose um, as a puzzle that would be a good fit for my channel. Um, I don't know anything about the puzzle apart from that. Um, and a good fit for my channel at the moment is um, I've been doing a few longer puzzles, but um, things that are what I'm calling... <laughs> We've seen the difficulty breakdowns I've done before, which are rather than using the one to five scale, um, the walks in the park, the scenic hikes, the treks into the wilderness. So the walks in the parks are puzzles which newer solvers should be able to get through because the logic in them isn't too complex. It doesn't require, uh, even the, the harder walks may require some time because they need to discover some stuff, but there's no advanced tricks in them. Uh, scenic hikes may start to introduce some um, some tr uh, logic tricks where you may have um, some more advanced stuff. Um, so a little bit more experience might be required and tricks into the wilderness are for more experienced solvers. New people can try them, but they may want some help. Um, uh, and they're expected to take longer. And we've done that breakdown. But for the, the other breakdown I'm often using is the difference between coffee break or lunch break puzzles. A coffee break would be a puzzle that um, I would expect a moderately experienced solver to be able to, or an experienced solver at least, to be able to knock out in about 15 minutes. And a lunch break puzzle about half an hour. Because I feel that most people are coming to puzzles to not spend their entire evening on them. Um, and what they're wanting to do is sit down with the puzzle and do it on a train journey or over a coffee break or over a lunch break. Um, and if all that are being created are these huge mammoth puzzles that people have to dedicate an entire evening to, I don't think most people will actually do those. And I might throw a poll up certainly about that, or I may have already by the time you've seen this. So we'll see how all that goes. Um, but I've been told that this would be a lunch break puzzle. So I'm going to see how that goes. So, Candy Bowl by James Sinclair. So, what are the rules? Um, I, this is a setter provided link. I haven't tried resetting this. And um, there's a version with colored dots and a version that is colorblind friendly that uses letters instead of dots. And I will provide the link to the colorblind version below. So, normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits in cells separated by a dot are consecutive. So, these are difference dots. Okay. And dots must of the same color must always separate the same two digits. Okay, okay. For each pair of digits where at least one dot is given, all possible dots of that color are given. Okay. So what it means is if this, for example, was one and two, the, then that would mean all of these are one and two. Um... Cool, that makes sense. Right, no problem. 
Um, on thermometers, there are two thermometers. Digits increase from the bulb. So what that means is the digits must strictly increase from the bulb upwards. So this digit will be higher than this. This digit will be higher than this. This digit will be higher than this. That cannot go down and it cannot stay the same. And digits in with a shaded square, which are these four, must be even. Okay, so this is, okay, so it's just these four must be even, okay? So that's what we've got. I'm gonna restart the puzzle to restart my timer because it was up at <laughs> many, many hours because I loaded this puzzle a couple of days ago. Um, let's give this a shot. So we know that all of these are the same and every dot is given. But these are consecutive dots that all cover different things. So this must be odd. This is one, three, five, seven, or nine. And this, oh no, hungover Brem is about to have to do a coloring puzzle, isn't he? Because this, because each consecutive dot is going to need to have an even digit on it. So this is going to be an odd and an even, this is going to be an odd and an even, this is going to be an odd and an even, this is going to be an odd and an even. So, but each of these is going to be the same. And the reason I think this is going to be coloring is let's actually use the colors that are provided by the dots. Red, green, blue, and yellow. Um, and hopefully the colors here are different enough that you will be able to see them once I color them. But once I, so I'm going to color all of these as well. Because I think the negative constraint is what matters here. So hopefully now all of these are going to be visible. Because what it means is, and I'm going to give this a different color, let's call it purple. Now, what this means is, for example, under normal um, Sudoku rules, this and this could be the same digit. But in this puzzle, they can't be. Because, for example, if this was one, uh, let's use small digits, one, two, and one, there would need to be a blue dot here. Because for each pair of digits where at least one dot is given, all possible dots of that color are given. So, oh no, I'm going to have to do a really heavy multicoloring puzzle while I'm hungover and I struggle with coloring at the best of time. This is going to be a fun ride, people. So this can't be blue. So it means that you can never put blue next to blue, green next to green, yellow next to yellow, or red next to red. So this cell has to be blue, doesn't it? Because it can't be yellow, it can't be green, it can't be red, and it sees the one purple. So that is blue. Now this can't be blue and this can't be blue, but I need another blue in this box. Because there's two blue digits, two green digits, two red digits, two yellow digits, and one purple digit. Now where does purple go in this box? I can't go here, I'd have two of this, because there's only one purple digit. Whichever digit it is, there's only one of them. And if it was there and there, these would be the same digit. So this is purple, and then the one I'm missing is red. Okay, so far so good. So over here, I need a purple and a blue. And I can't put the blue there because then I'd have three blues in the column, and there's only two blue digits. So this is the purple, and this is the blue. Now over here, I've got two red and I've got two blue and I've got the purple. So it's two yellow and a green. So which means the yellows have to be kept apart because there's no yellow dot here. So the yellows are in those two and this is the green. Now in here, I've got a red, a blue and a green. Well, the red is in one of those two. The blue is in one of those two. Oh, this can't be blue or green. So I've got a red, a blue, and a green, but this can't be blue or green because it sees two blue and it can't go next to green. So this is the red and these are blue and green. And that can't be the green because it's next to a green. So this is the green and this is the blue. I'm going to make a mistake on this at some point and the entire video is going to turn into a complete nightmare. Because... Sorry, I'm picking up my strine as I get my, as I'm less with it. Um, I'm I'm not at my best. So this can't be blue 
It can't be yellow or green because it's next to them and it sees two red. So this can't be blue, yellow, red or green. This has to be purple. And this can't be blue, green, red or purple. So this is yellow. The, qu the trick here is where to look. This can't be blue, yellow, purple or red. So this has to be green. Is that right? Blue, yellow, red. It sees two blue, it sees two red. It can't be yellow and it can't be purple. This is green. This can't be blue, yellow. This could be red or green. So that one's not where I'm supposed to be looking. That cell is blue or purple. Nope. That sees two blue, two green. No, that's not it. Purple is not in those. That's not it either. Purple is in one of those two. Purple is in one of those two. I've got to put both yellow down here. To, no, one yellow down here, because I've already got one yellow in the column. Two green go in here, though, because I can't put any more greens in this column. So there's no green in this column, and none of these are green. So I've got to put two greens in here, but I can't put them both here. So this is green. And one of these is green. But this is green. So down here now, I need to put two yellow. And I can't put them next to each other because there's no yellow. So the two yellows have to be kept apart. And this is the missing red. And the other red can't go here because there's already two reds in the column. This is the red. Now I need to put two blues in this box and I can't put them together because there's no blue dot. Those are the two blues. And now the thing I'm missing here is purple. Now purple can't go here or here. This is purple. These are red. No, uh, yeah, sorry. I, th I saw that and thought it was green. I'm a little hungover. This needs to be red and yellow. And I'm not seeing that. This now can't be blue, yellow, purple. But it could still be red or green. What are these two again now? The yellow and green. Right, I need to put a yellow up here somewhere. And I can't put it here because that would put three yellows in the row. So this is the green. This is the yellow. In here, I need to put a yellow in one of those two. Okay, I need to put a red and a purple. So these are yellow, red, and purple. Yeah, not seeing a problem. I've got to put two blues in here, though. I don't have any blues in this column, and they can't be together because there's no blue dot. Those are both blue, so this is the missing green. So this row, I've got to put a red in one of those two. I've got to put a purple in one of those two. And I've got to put a blue in one of those two. And it can't be there. Can't put blue there. There's already two blues in the column or the box or whichever way. And there's already two blues in this column. The second blue in this row must be there. So these are red and purple. And that can't be purple. That's the red. This is purple. Now, in here, I'm putting a red and a yellow. Nope. Got to put a red somewhere in here, and it's not in one of those two. So it's one of those two. Maybe it's column five. I need a red, a green. Well, where's the red in column five? It's not in one of those two. I need a second red. It's there. So these are a green and a yellow.
not seeing how to do oh hang on i can't put a green next to a green so that's the yellow and that's the green this would be actually i'm not sure this would be easier if i was left hung over because i'm terrible at this sort of puzzle at the best of times so these are red and purple these are red and yellow yeah not seeing it So what are these two? These are yellow and purple. Well, I can't put yellow there. This is the yellow and this is the purple. And over here, I now need to put a yellow, but there's already two yellows in the row. row. So this is the yellow, this is the red. Now I've got two reds in this row, so this can't be the red. This is the red and this is the purple. This row is now missing green and this row is missing green which can't go there because of this I possibly had that earlier and this is now blue so this is blue and yellow that's not doing it for me This is blue, yellow, and red. Well, I'm not putting red there. I'm not putting blue there. These are... Well, <sighs> putting a green in here somewhere. I'm putting a green in here somewhere, but there's already two greens in those rows. So that is a green. And these are yellow and red. Now I can see purple isn't one anymore because it's got to be higher than green on this little thermo. I made a deduction. Um, so these, I don't want to do multicoloring if I can avoid it, but I may have to. These are yellow and red, but they don't see yellow and red. These are blue and yellow. These are blue, yellow and red. And this is yellow and red. <laughs> Could this be simple coloring? I mean, I've got a lot of simple coloring in the grid. Okay, how do I define simple coloring? I'm going... So what I mean by simple coloring is this. This here is a red A. And by that I mean whichever red digit that is, that is A version of it. This is B version of it because these have to be different. But these have to be different. So these two are the same digit. This is the red A because it's different to B. And I can just roll that through the grid. That's the B, that's the A, and my system is lagging like mad. I'm getting this, it's, it's lag that I sometimes get when I'm using Sudoku Pad through OBS. And it's not a Sudoku Pad problem, it is absolutely an OBS problem. A, B, uh, so this is A, this is B, this is B, this is A. Now I need to put a red in here and I need to put a red B. I need to put a red B in here. That's correct, isn't it? I've got this right. B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Yeah, I'm pretty certain I've done that correctly. All the A's and B's don't see each other, but I can't put a red B down here. And both of those are red Bs. So that can't be the red B. I can't put red B in any of those. This is the red B. So this is now yellow. 
This is now the red A. This is now... These are yellow and blue. So now I need to do simple coloring on yellow and blue. So I'm gonna start as far away from this as possible to then do the same sort of coloring. So I go back here and I go A, B, B, A, B, A. That makes this B, this A, which makes this B and this A, B, A. Oh, that's a problem because I can't get down into these. Okay, so maybe I need to do yellow. A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. A makes this B and A. This B makes this A and B. This A makes this B and this A, which makes this B and this A. And now... I need to put a yellow A right there because yellow A can't be in this row and it can't be in that column. So this becomes the yellow A. So this becomes blue and it's the blue A. So this is the blue B, the blue A, the blue B, the blue A. So this has to be the blue now and it's a blue B and this has to be yellow and it's a blue yellow B. And I should probably do the same with green. So this is the green A, the green B, B, A, B, A, A, B, A, B, B, A, B, A, A, B, A, and B. So that's all of the cells distinguished. So I know the makeup of the grid. I should have had some painkillers before this. This is really weird for hungover Brem. It's only been 17 minutes. So it's about the right difficulty for what I'm looking for. Okay, so what information do I have? I have that this is lower than this. But I do have these as even digits. They're kind of hard to see. It's why I often use the outline boxes rather than the gray squares, because the gray squares either in what some versions of the software mean that you can't see the highlighting or in these kind of disappear, um, whereas the outline boxes, you they still maintain their stuff. These are two, four, six, and eight. So I could highlight every... Do I want to do that? I kind of possibly do. So every blue A, I'm going to do these one at a time, partly because I'm oh, I'm still in letter mode. So I need to get rid of the C, and then I need to get out of letter mode. I'm not going to need letter mode anymore. Um, red B, and this is just going to be terrible, is 2468. Green B, there is almost um, certainly people will color this multicolor or anything or do a different way to, to spot this. And that's fine, but I'm avoiding multicoloring at any possible way in order to not have my brain melt. Because I just can't deal with it. So what's that telling me? So I know all the other ones are odd, but I don't need to over pencil mark that. Well, this thermo is all odd digits. The, these are one, three, five, seven, nine. But I can't put nine partway down a thermo. I can't put one partway up. So well, the way I can do this is differently. So what I do is I go, this is nine. This has a maximum of seven. This has a maximum of five. So this is one, three, three, five, five, seven, seven, nine. That has to be correct, doesn't it? Because, yeah, 3579, there could be gaps in here. It could go 1579 or whatever, but these are the possible breakdowns of those digits. And this, well, this can't be a one because 
this is higher than green. But this is higher than green, and green is only 7 or 9. And this had to be odd because there's an even digit on each one of these. So purple has to be 9. Green A is 7. which means blue B is five. Yellow A is three and red A, I'm gonna have missed one of them, is one. One is only consecutive with two, so red B is two. Three now can't be consecutive two, so yellow B is four. Five can't be consecutive with four, so blue A is six. And the only digit that's left is eight. That's really cool. Yeah, so these odd digits, sorry, these even digits, you know, two, four, six, eight, odd digits, these even digits at the top tell you once you've got all the coloring, and I really like how you use the simple coloring to get the final coloring down here, tell you that these are all odd. These all being odd and this being below purple because of this thermo and purple not being able to be even because you have to put an even on each of these. That's just a really simple disambiguation, but very, very elegant. The key to this puzzle is the coloring. That's really cool. Thank you, Ambrose, for recommending it. Thank you, Jane Sinclair, for giving me permission to do your puzzles. Um, and if you do come across puzzles that you think are good coffee break or lunch break puzzles, please send in recommendations to my submission guidelines below. Um, they would be really appreciated. Um, send in a, a link to the puzzle, where you found it, the details of the setter, and a copy of your solved grid so I can um, just confirm that everything is good. Uh, I can run that through to the testers and make sure it's all good. Um, that's absolutely fantastic. To Thank you, both of you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, yeah, and as always, um, good luck with your solving.